Hey y'all, I'm Shauna. Welcome in or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking all about mindset shifts. And if you want to be a conscious consumer or change your shopping habits, you're going to have to participate in a mindset shift or two. Today I'm going to talk about six. Six mindset shifts I think are necessary in order to change how you shop. And some of them might be more applicable to you than others, kind of depending on where you are, or what your past experiences have been. So I hope that one of these six resonate with you. Before we get into it, I would love it if you would subscribe to catch more content like this. We have great content coming in January and beyond. Love for you to be here. I also have a website with a blog and a newsletter, shanarapari.com. I'd love for you to check that out as well. Let's get into it and let's start with number one. You are not starting over. This applies if you've attempted to change your shopping habits previously and you haven't experienced success or you're currently changing your shopping habits and you've you've tripped up a little bit. I also think this applies to New Year's resolutions. The mindset I'm suggesting you, sh- you shift from, <laughs> I almost said shit. The mindset you shift from. No, the mindset that you would have to shift from is this belief that, oh, I didn't, I didn't accomplish my goal this year. I didn't change my shopping habits this year. You know, didn't work out. Time to try again next year. It's a way of treating the end of the year or even like any date as a finish line. You don't complete this activity by this date. You failed. Therefore, you need to try again next year. Your year is not pass or fail. You don't like achieve your resolutions or you don't. And if you don't, then like you get held back a grade or you have to like repeat 12th grade or something. That's not what this is. When you don't achieve your goal, you don't lose all of the knowledge or all of the skills or all of the character building that you've, that has happened over those past years or the past year or years let's say you you tried to change your shopping habits in 2023 or in a certain part of it didn't work out. That's a stepping stone. That's a way for you to take that knowledge, iterate and keep going. You don't just start over. You keep going. If you consistently view time as a deadline, then you're going to consistently go back to square one. And I feel like that's just a way to sabotage yourself. It's a way to say, I didn't accomplish time to get over. And like in your mind, you're eliminating or negating, maybe forgetting or discounting all of the knowledge and skills that you've gained. Let's say you saved up $10,000 over the course of the year and you went, ah, yes, you know, I saved up my $10,000. That was my goal. And then let's say you start January and in the first two months you spend it all. Are you starting over if you want to change your habits and or resave 10,000. In some respects, yes, because you have to resave the $10,000, but also in other respects, no. You've learned over the past year, you've learned over the savings, you've learned over your attempts to change your habits. You build on that, you use that as a stepping stone. And putting yourself back to square one every time you make a mistake, you make a misstep, or you don't accomplish your goal that year, it's, it's making yourself smaller. You're saying mentally one mistake equals a failure. Therefore, I have to start all over again. That can be a really big mental weight that does work as a form of self-sabotage. Relatedly, embracing failure. This is a hill I will die on, okay? (laughs) I feel very passionate about this one. Mistakes are not failures. And the, the biggest way you can shoot yourself in the foot self-sabotage is to throw in the towel every time you make a mistake. Even worse is when you have a mistake somehow be representative of your character. You've made a mistake, therefore you are a failure. No. Making mistakes does not equate to ourselves and our personhood, our, our, you know, ourselves as beings as failures. Those two things are not interchangeable. Doing this, throwing in the towel every time that you make a mistake is a way that we keep ourselves small and it prevents us from growing, changing, and thriving. Mistakes are our best teachers. That's the hill I would die on. We learn from them. We iterate from them. 
mistakes are the way that we achieve success because mistakes are our stepping stones to success. Mistakes are how we iterate. Mistakes are how we learn the lesson. Thinking otherwise is kind of like thinking that life is going to be perfect for you. Or if you're trying to change a habit, that it's just going to go perfect. Very few people get it right the first time and nobody gets it right every single time you've ever tried to do anything ever. Even the most seasoned and successful people make mistakes. Refusing to embrace failure is also refusing to embrace the path to success. One of my personal favorite quotes that I have held in my mind for at least a decade, if not longer, is very, very famous. I think it's a one of my very favorite quotes that I've had. One of my very favorite personal quotes that has, you know, stuck around with me for close to 15 years. Very famous Samuel Beckett quote, which is try again, feel again, feel better. Number three, you are playing the long game. One of the mistakes I see people make when they want to change their habits or most specifically when they want to go on a no-buy is that they opt for a solution that they can do right now. A no-buy is a solution that is easily accessible and it's kind of one of the like go-to solutions when you have a shopping problem might even be like the only really concrete, clear solution that is like easily accessible. You go on YouTube and you say, how do I change my shopping habits or how do I stop buying stuff? You see no buy and it's also very actionable. There's lots of videos on it. It's very actionable so you can go on one tomorrow. Like you can see a video today and you can say, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to go on my no buy. Having a solution, even if you haven't taken a step towards that solution, just having one can be a mental ease. Like you know what you're supposed to do. It's the having the plan and knowing what to do that can provide great comfort. But opting for the first solution that we see or the easiest solution we see or the you know most right now solution can be short-sighted because it prioritizes immediacy versus effectiveness. Your goal isn't to come up with the quickest solution. Your goal is to change how you shop, how you relate to your money, how you spend. The most effective solution is going to be the one that will give you the long-term results, something that you can take with you for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. I mean, I don't want to say forever because sometimes, you know, new information, new ways of doing they come about and, you know, we can change and iterate, but something that is a long-term solution. In other words, you're playing the long game. It doesn't really matter if you could change your shopping habits really well for the next year. What really matters is to find something that you can take with you through life. What you can do right now might not be that thing that works long-term. And so the mindset shift here is prioritizing the long-term, but also you know, taking time to think about your choices and not stepping anything into anything impulsively. You take time to slow step things. You take time to cultivate. A person who gets on a no-buy right now might have really great results for a year, but then on year two and three, they slip back or their success, maybe they weren't shopping like they were, but they also weren't shopping at their peak or at their best. And maybe they yo-yo with their spending habits for the next 10 years. Whereas another person who might have mediocre results for the first two to three years, build something consistent for the next 15. I'm not saying a no-buy is inherently one category over the other. A no-buy has provided so many people with such success. All I'm saying is to think about the long game. What for you is going to be the solution to provide you with long-term results? Number four, you are your own ceiling. Some of the greatest challenges that you will face in your journey to change your shopping habits are going to be mental ones. They're going to be the stories and narratives that you tell yourself, the things that keep you playing small. You can't do it. You're not good enough. You don't know enough. You've tried so many times before, you're a failure, so you can't do it again. People hit a wall and they assume it's a ceiling. You know, they assume that they can't get past it, that this is their end. 
But walls or ceilings often tell us what our next challenge is and not what the next end is or what the end is. Too often, we're the ones who are placing ceilings on ourselves. We limit our own capabilities and potentials because we've we've told ourselves we can't do better. That is not some kind of objective reality, but a story that we've either been told or have believed. Paying down debt, changing your habits and coping skills, those are real challenges. A large part of whether you succeed or not, develop the skills or not, have the patience or not, have the grace or not, is going to come from how you believe in yourself. If you don't believe you can do it, you won't. One thing that I have learned over the past three, almost four years, is that some people are built for failure. I know that kind of sounds harsh or mean, but I need you to hang in with me for a second because I need to clarify this. It's not that only some people have talent, conviction, or abilities. It's that some people embrace beliefs, mindsets, and attitudes that limit them, that cultivate limitation. And could these people very well succeed? Yes. Do they have it in them to succeed? Yes. I've had firsthand experience with this. I'm going to give you a not a no by example. In like 2021, I started running for the first time. And that year, my runs were like three, four and a half K was my max. I truly believed in my heart that I was incapable of doing more and doing better. This year, I regularly run anywhere between five and 10K. Did my first 10K run this year. Amazing. Did I always have it in me to run that far? Yes. Do I have it in me to run farther? Yes. But I was right. In 2021, I was incapable of doing better because I believed that so thoroughly. I'm not saying to delude yourself into believing like literally anything is possible, but deluding yourself a little bit if you don't believe it yourself can go a long way. So what I'm trying to get at here is that like the good thing about all of this is that you can cultivate ideas and beliefs that limit you, you can also cultivate ideas and beliefs that propel you. I know this point sounds a bit self-developmenty and it does have a purpose. If you want to change how you shop, pay down debt, those are big things. Those are big goals. Those are big changes. You want to do a big change, your mindset is going to play a role. It just is. The last thing to talk about today is that your shopping habits go far beyond the habits. If you go into your journey believing that like stuff is just stuff and that you change your habits and you're good, I think you're in for a bit of a surprise. Our stuff isn't just stuff. And when it comes to our shopping habits, there's usually more at play. This is part of why I pair habits with contentment. So let's take the average American with just about $7,000 worth of credit card debt. In order to accumulate $7,000 worth of credit card debt, you're going to have to have specific ideas and beliefs about money. Well, not just that, but things like debt and credit cards themselves, wealth, finances, shopping, um, materialism, and so much more. Your views about these things, let's take materialism as an example, or wealth. Your views aren't inherently like in and of themselves positive or negative, but you have narratives about all of these things, some of which serve you, some of which don't. And sometimes we can assume that how we think is just normal or it is the right way to think. Also, sometimes we don't fully realize that how we're thinking about stuff can be harmful to ourselves. If you want to change your shopping habits, you will also have to tackle your thoughts and your narratives about kind of larger concepts, some of which I've just, you know, talked about. And in a recent video, I talked about my experience, you know, kind of going from over shopper, over consumer to a conscious consumer. And in that video, I talked about being naive going on a no buy. I thought that I thought that my no buy would fix things. I could like learn a little bit about money as I went and like, I would be fine. But I was truly not prepared for all of those narratives, all of those emotions and habits that were built into shopping. 
and not just habits like we have thoughts about like what are good habits like what that means and then we have our own ideas about like goodness and badness then we can even bind those in things like morality and ethics and when i started challenging my coping mechanisms and you know why i went to shopping i was genuinely unprepared for how much emotion was bound into those things and also some of the hurt and pain that needed to be addressed. That's of course not everybody's story. And all of our experiences are unique. Our narratives about, you know, shopping and our habits are, you know, unique to us and our experiences, but you have them, I have them. And these narratives are at play whether you see them or not. I think this might fall into what people consider a money mindset, but it's not just money. It's lots of of things and uh, how things relate to each other. So that's it for me today. That's the video. I would like to hear your thoughts about these mindset shifts. Also, what are mindset shifts that you've made in your journey to become a conscious consumer and to change your shopping habits? Thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me today. Although if you would subscribe to catch more content like this, And I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.